Hello, my name's Anna Brackenridge and I'm a diabetes consultant at Guy's and St Thomas's in London. My disclosures are here and welcome to this topic, which is about how to use CGM to help manage blood glucose levels in mid-pregnancy. The learning objectives of this session are to understand what um, to expect in the middle stages of pregnancy, how blood glucose levels are likely to change and how CGM can help with insulin dose adjustment. So mid-pregnancy is a really exciting time. Hopefully um, women are starting to feel better. Nausea and tiredness are improving. It's a time when you can start actually sharing the news of pregnancy with family and friends. Your baby's growing and you're starting to actually look pregnant. And excitingly, you might start feeling the baby move. This stage of pregnancy is when the baby grows the most. At week 14, you can expect the baby will be about the size of a kiwi fruit. By week 28, the size of an aubergine, and by week 35, the, the size of a large melon. So during this time, there's gonna be frequent appointments with your diabetes and pregnancy team. And the purpose of these appointments are to support, support a diabetes management at this time. Um, at the appointments, the glucose readings will be reviewed, your insulin doses will be reviewed, you'll have HbA1c checked, also uh, urine and blood pressure, and the baby will be checked. You'll have lots of scans, a 20-week scan, a fetal echo, which is a heart scan for the baby, and um, scans to check baby's growth at generally about 28, 32, and 36 weeks of pregnancy. Um, and also the second um, appointment to have your um, eyes checked. At this stage of pregnancy with diabetes, things that you will expect you would notice is that your appetite will hopefully be increasing. Um, and you, at the beginning of pregnancy, you'll have um, um, had a reduction in your insulin doses, generally at a time when you're very prone to hypoglycemia. But by week 16, approximately, of pregnancy, this will be changing. Your insulin doses generally will go back to pre-pregnancy levels. And after this, you're going to notice a really um, marked increase in insulin doses right through to the, toward the end of pregnancy. And this is due to all of the hormones that change um, um, through this stage of pregnancy. So increasing insulin doses tends to be very, very noticeable from about week 20 to 24 onwards. And you'll find that every week your insulin dose is just increasing, increasing in order to keep your blood glucoses um, in the pregnancy um, range. By week 34 of pregnancy, your background insulin is likely to have increased by at least 50%. So if you started pregnancy on 24 units, you're likely to be on about 36 units. The really big increases you're going to see are with mealtime doses. Um, they're likely to, some women will find they might have doubled, but some women will find that, that the dose has tripled or sometimes even quadrupled. And that's completely to be expected. And it's what we'd expect to see during this stage of pregnancy. The other thing that people often notice is that the breakfast doses increase the most. So how can CGM help at this stage of pregnancy? Well, I think because your um, insulin doses are changing all the time, CGM is a, is a fantastic tool to help you look for patterns and make adjustments proactively. And I think there's two ways we can think about how to use the CGM. First of all, you can use it for making day by day adjustments. So you can um, frequently look at your CGM throughout the day and use it to correct if you're above your targets. And then I think the second really important way of using CGM is, is reviewing the data more in a retrospective way or looking back at your data. So um, you can then make um, changes to your mealtime ratios or your background insulin. The more that you use your continuous glucose monitoring to spot patterns and, and change your doses, the better you're going to do. Um, and this can be quite tricky at, uh, to start with. And your, the, the job of your diabetes and pregnancy team is really to guide you and support you with this. When we come to look at continuous glucose monitoring data, um, we, sometimes we'd like to look at the summary of the data in the last week or so. And this is the kind of view that you might see. And this is probably the kind of views you'll be, um, you'll be looking at in your pregnancy, diabetes and pregnancy appointments with the team. But I think that, that it's really helpful if, you, if, you, if, if women understand what, what the data means so they can, the women can make changes themselves. So for instance, in, in, in this, um, this figure shows the black line shows mean uh, or average glucose um, throughout the times uh, throughout the day, and then the yellow and the grey gives us an idea of spread or variability or spread at different times of day. And this is data from from two weeks of pregnancy. 
Um, so you can see on this particular example, you can see that blood glucose tends to be um, um, in target in the morning, but then is rising after meals, particularly after breakfast and lunch. There's some quite marked uh, peaks in blood glucose after meals. At this stage of pregnancy, you're going to really notice that your glucose is rising after meals. And as discussed in some of the previous topics, there are lots of different reasons why this could be. Um, if you're noticing a pattern of high glucose after meals, then think about food choices, think about insulin timing, um, thinking about, think about other factors that um, may uh, be contributing to this. As discussed in the other topics, a timing of mealtime insulin is really important, particularly as the pregnancy progresses and your insulin doses go up. So uh, in the later stages of pregnancy, we'd expect that you may need to take your insulin 30 minutes or even si up to 60 minutes before eating. If you're noticing high blood glucose after meals, um, you may want to correct this. We would, would say the advice we would, would give is be careful um, correcting after meals because it can cause hypoglycemia later. Uh, so um, generally would say use your one hour value to reflect on, on why the glucose may be high. Um, and if you are going to correct, uh, do that, uh, wait until two hours and correct at two hours um, if, if you have not got a downward arrow on your CGM. So here's an example of um, someone in the middle stages of pregnancy um, using continuous glucose monitoring where you can see a clear pattern of rising glucoses after meals. If you're seeing this clear pattern and you've uh, looked at other factors, the, um, it's likely that you're going to need to increase your mealtime insulin. And this is just to summarise how to do this because it can be confusing. At the beginning of pregnancy, most people may be on a a ratio of perhaps one unit for 10 grams of insulin. As pregnancy progresses, they're going to need more insulin. So for instance, if you're on one to 10 grams, you could increase to one to seven grams. Um, and by the end of pregnancy, you might find that you're on one to 3.5 grams or one to 2.5 grams. Um, some people might be using Daphne ratios. So many people using Daphne ratios would be on a one to one, which is um, one unit of insulin for every 10 grams. Um, of carbohydrates, by the end of pregnancy, they might be on a four to one ratio. As the pregnancy progresses, you're likely to need to change your insulin sensitivity factor as well. Um, and as a reminder, insulin sensitivity factor is how much one unit of insulin will bring your blood glucose down by. Um, and generally at the beginning of pregnancy, most kind of common insulin, sensit uh, insulin sensitivity factor would be one unit for three millimoles. Um, um, so one unit of insulin would de decrease blood glucose by three millimoles per litre. Um, as pregnancy progresses, if you need to change this and increase this, you could try one to two millimoles per litre. And often by the end of pregnancy, people might be on one to one millimole per litre. Another pattern you may see when reviewing your CGM data is that um, you're waking up with high blood glucoses. And here's an example uh, of a CGM showing that, that um, this particular woman is wake waking up with her blood glucoses above the target range. So if, you, if this is a pattern that you're, you, you're recognising is happening, you need to think about increasing your background or basal insulin. Um, and the general rule of thumb would, be, would suggest is that you change your dose by 10% and monitor the effect for two days before making any more changes. So for example, if you're on insulin injections and you're on a background insulin of, ten, um, insulin of 10 units, you could try 11 units. Um, if you're on a bigger dose, then of course the change is going to be more. So if you're on 20 units of insulin, you need to try 22 units. Similarly, if you're on insulin pump and your basal rate's about one unit per hour, you could try 1.1 units per hour. And uh, later in pregnancy, you might be on two units an hour, try 2.2 units per hour. I think the important thing also to remember when you're on an insulin pump is that when you notice your blood glucose rising, um, you need to make a change to your basal rate at least two hours before you notice the, the, the rise in blood glucose. So for instance, if your blood glucose are, are rising from 6 a.m., you need to think about changing your basal rate from 4 a.m. So the goal of using continuous glucose monitoring in pregnancy is to increase the time in the, the pregnancy target range. And this is an example of a woman who successfully did that. Um, so she started CGM in April 2019, and you can see the data from the first two weeks when her time in range was 45%. And just two weeks later, she'd increased her time in range to 53%. And you can really see the difference on those, the, the, the two graphs there of how she'd successfully reduced the rise in glucoses in the morning using the CGM to do that.
So just to summarise um, the changes it, that women can, um, can make and use CGM to help them make um, in the middle stages of pregnancy, I think the important thing is to check CGM very frequently and to correct it, um, correct your glucose uh, when necessary, but also importantly use your CGM to help spot patterns so you can make changes to your mealtime doses and your background doses and also changing your correction doses. And this is really how to successfully use CGM to, to help you with your pregnancy. I hope you've enjoyed this topic um, and I hope you now feel that you know what to expect in the middle stages of pregnancy with diabetes, how blood glucose levels are likely to change and how CGM can be used to help with insulin dose adjustment.